Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and public education in the South. And we have with us to talk about the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and public education in the South, our Professor Kelly Sanford, a professor in the Department of Sociology at Tennessee State uh, University. And of course, uh, Dr. Sanford, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Well, thank you so much, and thank you so much for inviting me. And to tell you how mm -hmm. delighted we are to have you yeah. uh, with us, uh, Dr. Sanford, uh, I'm reminded that uh, not long ago you uh, first uh, made your appearance yeah. uh, on this uh, show, and you talked about uh, higher education in the 21st century, and of course we've received uh, so many compliments in reference uh, to that particular show. But what we'd like to do today, Dr. Uh, Sanford, is to uh, talk about the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and to uh, talk about how that act had some impact upon public education in the South. But before we do that, let's uh, have you to give our audience uh, some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that eventually led you to uh, Tennessee State University, because I'm sure that uh, some of them probably did not have an opportunity to see uh, the show, the last show that you did with us. So, and so give us that information, and then we'll be able to uh, talk about the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and public education in the South. Well, certainly, and I would first like to thank you so much for inviting me this morning, as well as having such a profound show that really offers a different perspective. Again, I am E. Kelly Sanford, and I presently am associate professor in the Department of Sociology at Tennessee State University. My background is very varied, but I've been in education mm -hmm. my entire life. I received my PhD from Howard University in Washington, D.C., as well as my master's degree from North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina. I also received a postdoc degree at the Pennsylvania State University in State College, Pennsylvania. I'm also very proud of a number of other types of work opportunities I've had in addition to being in education. One with the National Headquarters of the American Red Cross in Washington, D.C., working with HIV AIDS education, the American Association of Retired Persons, doing victims assistance programs um, in crime, as well as the National Organization mm -hmm. of Black Law Enforcement Executives. Mm -hmm. We also had a mm -hmm. victim assistance program. Mm -hmm. And so you've been involved in a whole variety of uh, activities uh, during your career, yes. uh, Dr. Sanford. Uh, what we'd like to do mm -hmm. uh, is to uh, look at the Civil Rights Act of uh, 1964, uh, Dr. Sanford, as okay. we indicated earlier, and to uh, have you to give us uh, some preliminary statements mm -hmm. in reference to uh, where that uh, act of 1964 stands in reference to the uh, history of the African American in, in this country. Yes. Well, it's a very important act. As you may very well know and have already stated, mm -hmm. the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was implemented at that particular time period because of the egregious nature of our society, the prejudice, discrimination that had historically been here mm -hmm. in America. It was put forth to try to give some of really fair accommodations, if you will, mm -hmm. to public facilities and education mm -hmm. and the job force mm -hmm. and all of the different components of the society in which we live in. Mm -hmm. And I'd be remiss not to take us back a little bit and to frame mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this act of 1964 because, it's, as we you've stated, it's about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. But for 244 years, there was enslavement here in America. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the worst types of peculiar institutions, as Dr. Kenneth Stamp would mention, mm -hmm. um, that the history of the world has ever noticed. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always been slavery in antiquity, but this mm -hmm. one was somewhat peculiar. Mm -hmm. All the literature indicates that. Mm -hmm. And then 81 years of Jim Crow laws that came after that. Mm -hmm. You're talking about 1861 to 1865 mm -hmm. with the civil rights, with the um, Civil War, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then during that Civil War, coming out of that with the Reconstruction mm -hmm. from around 1866 to 1870, mm -hmm. came the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, mm -hmm. the 14th Amendment, and the 15th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Some of my viewers might not realize or remember, the 13th mm -hmm. Amendment mm -hmm. actually freed mm -hmm. Africans. Mm -hmm. 14th Amendment gave citizenship rights and the 15th Amendment gave the right to vote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So an excellent question would be, mm -hmm. why are we talking about the Civil, Civil Rights, Rights Act, Act of 1964? 1964? Yeah, good, very yeah. good. And of course, uh, Dr. Sanford, we're getting ready, and we'll talk about that when we come back uh, during the second segment, because uh, uh, we're getting ready for the uh, first commercial break. Okay. But I think, I think that what you've done here, you've laid a, a, a very fertile 
uh, foundation uh, to talk about this act of 1964 because the question, as you indicated, yeah. is almost natural. That is, if the 13th Amendment was uh, right. freed Africans and yeah. the 14th Amendment gave them, quote, civil rights, yeah, then uh, why uh, another uh, right? And that will allow you, I think, when okay. we can come back to uh, talk about uh, some of the activities uh, in uh, that particular period that yeah, uh, kept Africans from enjoying all of the uh, rights that uh, they were accorded yeah. uh, in the uh, uh, Civil Rights Act of 1866, I think that's uh, yeah. And of course, uh, we're uh, making preparations for our first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience uh, following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Jobs, family.